Hello again, Cherokee Collectors. We have a pretty recent release of the uh, GTR 50th concept. I don't think it's a real car. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, it's Cherokee Zero number 80, casting number 81. So they're actually getting pretty high up there in the Zero lineup. Zero is the top end of Cherokee. Uh, then they have this line called Qs, which are just as pricey, but they don't even have a motor. And the, the way their wheels pivot it's kind of weird. They're basically just reusing the bodies from the zero line and making the wheels more poseable, but not necessarily uh, in the best way. This is colorway D. So there was an ABC. I know there was a blue version. I don't know what the first two were. Maybe they're just white. Like uh, I, I don't know. I forget. Anyways, uh, one issue yeah, you're gonna have a Choro Q and TLVs, the same parent company, is you have to add your own mirrors. Which is kind of silly, really. <clears throat> because if you knock the mirror off, you're just going to have a glue spot. right? So I never put the mirrors on. This is here because I'm going to do a little uh, showcase of every generation of Skyline in Choroku form. But let's uh, finish reviewing this thing off here. Back. Let me hide that window, it's kind of annoying. So this thing has a uh, dark metallic gray. As far as the body goes, it looks pretty nice. One thing I don't like about Cherokee Zeros is the, the flatness of the tires. They just don't look realistic. Car tires don't look this flat. It's just stupid. You know, the older Cherokees have more rounded sidewalls. So it's kind of weird. One thing about Zeros is in most cases, at least all the recent ones, you get wheels specifically molded for the car. You know, these wheels actually belong on that car, so it's nice. There's some gold paint, you know, accents here in this vent area, and then all this gold here is Tampa printed, no decals, no stickers, so it's paint, very nice. It is a, I did mention, a wind-up motor. Race. It didn't make any clicking noise. There we go. You have to wind it up quite a bit. And it's going to take some time to actually get up to speed. Okay. Going around to the front. We have a really glossy grill area. It's so glossy it's hard to focus on, but even way in here you have this uh, mesh pattern for the, that, uh, I don't know, brake duct perhaps. And here for the radiator, it's gold. Nicely defined mesh though. It's a little extra paint there, but you'd never see it in normal conditions. What's going on here? Is that like a badge, I think? Yeah, some sort of indication of a badge. I like how, you know, it is golden here, but the surround is black. So there's a lot of paint effort there. And there's a little gold line carrying across from this little side side barge here, going around to the bumper. It's pretty neat. Actually, that line carries across up here to the back as well. Okay, uh, the headlights, they are just paint though. There's no translucency, it's just black with some white lines on it. The pinstriping is very nice here. Uh, golden, the little NACA ducks. Some sort of hood latch details molded in. You can see the little bit of the air and light on the bottom, I think. Uh, you can see maybe a little bit of the motor outline. So it's, it's actually a clear body. Well, it's smoked body, it's not opaque. Uh, okay, so this side we have a fuel filler. That would be the difference from the other side. Didn't even notice because it's so dark, but it looks like this kicks in a little bit. You know, this little side sill. Going around to the back, we have some nice silver exhaust tips looking pretty good. And then some black here. There's a more grilled pattern there. And then we have the floating taillights that are very unique to this car. <laughs> I don't think I like it. And then way back in here, I think I just saw a grill pattern, yeah. If I can get my toothpick. This is pretty far back. A grill pattern here. Maybe underneath the light, I can't tell. The middle of the lights is actually hollow. It goes in quite a bit. That's an interesting way to do it. it. Tells you what it is, so that's good. The struts for the wings are actually painted silver. And they're not super wide like a Hot Wheels. Uh, the wing is body colored in this metallic gray. You can see on the roof, you do have this little third brake light or something up here, painted silver, and more of this like boxy, boxing pinstriping of this gold. So it's kind of like an old John Player special livery. 
but they think this is an homage to the 1973 concept car that had a bunch of gold pinstriping on it. In fact, I can try to bring that out later. I better pause and get it now. Okay, so that'll come later. So all in all, it's a nicely done Choro Q. You can see the wing is floating for, totally. It's very, it's a nicely executed, you know, cartoon rendition of the real concept car. It's just that I don't really like the looks of the real concept car. I guess I'm okay with the front end of it, but the rear end is just really, it's a little bit too out there for me. I mean, that's the purpose of a concept car though, to push, push the bounds of styling, whether or not that actually makes it to the next generation. Uh, like the R36 Skyline, we don't know. So let's get into a show. So I remembered I actually have the realistic version of this car done by Time Micro. So I think they did a decent job with the, the model itself. It's just again, they, for me, the car is a little bit weird looking as far as the styling goes, especially that rear end. It's just crazy. It is really wacky. All right, well, anyways, you can see the deformation of a Choro Q. It's quite tall, quite a bit shorter. And then here's the inspiration, I think, for the paint job. This is Choro Q of the 1973 Ken Mary. It's the 73 concept car that never really became production because the oil crisis they decided to take their money and focus on uh, fuel economy instead of racing. So. But still, pretty cool looking. And these are some just Hot Wheel Real Riders wheels they painted gold. So let's go into the history of uh, Chorakus. I guess we should, maybe we'll just go backwards in time. So the R35, the current uh, Skyline, this is a Cherokee Zero, so you can see it has the specific wheels to this particular car in reality. And this is casting number 56, so it's actually quite a big jump back in time. Then we have the R34, and uh, this has some for crazy photo shift paint, it's pretty neat. It's uh, the real gimmick line, it came out in, I guess, uh, two digits there, 01, 2001, I think is when this one came out. I guess we're going to have to lose this now. And I guess I'm going to have to do this as well, shift those over. So naturally before the R34 was the R33. And so here we have this, I have some 3D printed uh, TE37s. Uh, this is from the high grade line and it says 1998, I think, there. And this is actually made in Taiwan, <laughs> not China. Interesting. And it's got this gimmick of a paper, <laughs> paper engine sticker. Kind of weird. Nice paint job though, purple. All right, so then a step back, we have the R32. This is in from an initial D collection. I did 3D print my own wheels again. And uh, this one has translucent headlights. So I'm going to have to shift these forward, or maybe more like this. Yeah, maybe I can get them all on the table like this. Okay, try to focus on the middle, I guess. Or maybe I'll just, well, we'll just have to keep going. All right, so then we have what? The R31, and I have some 3D printed JDM wheels on this. Uh, this toy came out in 2004. I have a feeling this casting is older than that, though. Pretty similar is the R30. And this one came from the same collection, 04. Ooh, I think it just broke. Ooh, I thought it just broke that antenna. Huh? But it just actually pivots. Interesting. Yeah, it's a very blocky looking car. Not so. So cool. Again, 3D printed wheels on that one. All right, now we're back to a Cherokee Zero. We have the C210 line. Uh, it says 2000 GT Turbo. This is Zero casting number 36, which came out apparently according to this production dial 2015. Looks like the 11th month of 2015 is what that 
why 15 would mean. All right. And then back to the Ken Mary. Uh, I don't know where these wheels, I think maybe this came with these wheels. There was some sort of old collection of GTRs, apparently in 2008. Okay, you can see clear body stuff. All right. Uh, I didn't put putty in these, they might roll off. And then my favorite one is the Hakasuka, which is the first of the GTRs. And this particular one is from the Jay's Tipo collection, which came out in 2002. You see, look at the old tires. Look how rounded they are, right? That's what tires look like to me. I mean, go outside and look at your tires. I guess it depends if it's an old car. Modern cars with the low profile, yeah, they're, they are kind of flat or flatter. But old, old tires with high aspect ratios are balloons. They're balloons of rubber. All right, we can't forget, though, before... There was a company called Prince Motor Company, and they created the first Skyline, and then Nissan absorbed them. So this is called the Skyline Sport, and this particular model came out in 2004. Okay. I was able to get them all on there. So let me uh, maybe lower the position a little bit, and I'll focus on the front center so you can see them all. So yeah, starting with the Prince Skyline, Akasuka, and then the Ken Mary, C210, the R30, R31, R32, blah, 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 blah. So for me, I think the Akasuka is my favorite, but I think then think I think the R34 is my second favorite Skyline. Uh, I don't know if it's because of Fast and Furious or it's because I used to read tuner magazines where these these things would have like a thousand horsepower, which for the day was quite insane. Okay. Let's go with the top view for you. That color shift paint's pretty neat. But the gold pinstriping it is really fantastic. You know, I'm gonna actually put this in the middle since that's the new subject. Yeah, the gold pinstriping is a lot of effort, so big fan. So I think this is a, it's a little Star Wars Gashapon figure by Bandai. I don't know what the line of products are though, but there, there's a bunch of Star Wars, really short Star Wars characters. And it's got the same paint job, so I throw it up here. So this is another fine, finely executed model, or I guess it's not a model, finely executed toy as far as the paint apps go. Uh, I really wish just Jorge would make the tires look more realistic. I don't know why they used to look realistic before Zero came out, and they just, they're stubborn. They're weird. <laughs> you know? But anyways, uh, I'll still buy more Jorge Zeros. Alright, so thanks for watching, and we'll see that when that happens.